Hi friends, this is Jamie. I want to welcome you to the channel today. I hope everyone is doing well and staying safe. Today is the next part in our color along here for Nice Little Town Valentine's Day by Tatiana Bogimastalova. And um, in the description box below, I have put a link where you can get this book on Amazon. It's just a regular link and also um, the link to the Etsy store if you are interested in um, purchasing this book through her Etsy store, which is cheaper and you can print it on um, your preferred paper or you can do the Amazon one where it already comes book for you. Um, or you can just watch us color it and color what you want to color and we're just happy to have you here. So what I'm doing here is I decided to color our little mouse guy here that is floating up to see his little Valentine. And she, or she won't be colored in this one. We're just coloring the guy here. And um, I decided to do a gray on him because I thought it would be a good color because it's so light in the background with that light blue. I thought that he would um, come to life making him gray. And since the tree has so much brown, I thought we better steer clear from brown. Now I may make my mouse girl white, but I haven't decided. She may end up being gray as well. Just depends uh, um, how I'm feeling, I guess. Um, as you can tell, I am doing a marker base, and this is with the Arteza Everblend marker, and this is a gray color. It's a green gray. Um, I'm trying to see if I can find the color. It's a green gray, so it's GG06 is the number. Um, the Arteza Everblends... Sorry about that, guys. I had to stop recording for a second because my son came in the room and I was telling him to please be patient. <laughs> um, so I was using the Arteza Everblend marker. Uh, I do like the Arteza Everblend markers. This is the new formatted version. This one's the chisel and fine end. Um, I do think that the fine end has a lot more control uh, not so much bleed out compared to like a Cali art marker. The Cali art markers seem to be a lot juicier and they're nice, but they tend to bleed out of the lines a lot more. And um, so I decided to just roll with the Artezas. Now I'm using the Artezas for the red and the blue here as well. And then we're going to go in and do additional shading with Polychromos pencils. Now, I did try to use the Star Joy, the regular Star Joy, not the gold ones. I don't have the gold ones, but the Star Joy normal ones did not do what I wanted on this paper. You couldn't even see them pigment wise. So then I switched back to the Polychromos pencils. Now, you could use Prismacolor pencils, but for me i prefer a pencil in books like this since there's so many little details that can keep a sharp point for a longer amount of time so that is why i opted for the polychromos pencil um this yellow that i'm using on his shirt is the same yellow we used in the balloons and that was it we did the balloons in part two of the color along and I believe the yellow is from the Ohuhu pastel set, the lemon chiffon color. And um, I'm also using another Ohuhu for the wrapping here on the pres or on the flowers. I'm going to make my flowers carnations because I think they look like carnations. Um, they could be dandelions now that I think about it. Because he is a mouse and they kind of look like a dandelion too. But I ended up making mine pink like a carnation. So yeah. Just to go with our valentine color theme here. Um, the light green that I'm using we also used in our garland. So it 
it brings that color into another spot into the picture as well. And the pink is from the balloons as well. So as you can see, I'm just pulling in the colors that we've already used and established in our page to keep a consistent flow to the color throughout the whole page. I decided to put in the red because red is the complement opposite of green and we have a, sorry I can't talk we have a lot of green going on in this picture because of the leaves and the garland and everything so by um, putting in that red it's going to pop give it a punch of color now I don't want to add too many colors to our already very colorful palette here because we want to keep it consistent and a nice good flow so the only color I colors I really introduced here was the red and the blue and the blue is a complementary color to like oranges and stuff and um, a lot of browns have an orange base to them so it will bring out all the definition of the browns and the shading of the yellows and all that stuff so that is why we pulled in some blue and as you can see here I am just coloring these little I think they're like I think they're like beads is what I gather uh, because I don't think they're lights. They look like a string of beads, like she's decorated her tree with beads. It reminds me of those poly beads that you used to get as a little kid. So you could string and make yourself a necklace for fun. That's one of those things that will never die. <laughs> I think they've had poly beads forever. At least they did when I was growing up. I was born in 83 and I remember doing crafts with poly beads and I remember my mom did crafts with poly beads they've been around for a long time so yeah I'm just coloring all the hearts here red so we bring in that red color over here as well and I probably will be making that girl's curtain red so it brings red up into the corner there so basically uh, distributing it distributing it around the whole page as a whole. This is actually my favorite part in coloring a page, all the tiny details. Usually I do the details and all the objects and the characters first, but I tried to do something different with this color along and do all the background first so that I would actually achieve the finished look of this page <laughs> and not keep it a forever whip. So yeah we'll get it done as you can see I'm just using I'm just going back and forth with the colors we already have put in the palette here and sometimes I will do shading with marker here sometimes I will pull the pencils but I'm still pretty much working with marker only right now and the red is an Arteza Everblend as well so the red, the blue, and the gray were all Arteza Everblend markers. And I think I pulled a pink one as well for a shading contrast. And I needed to pull one Prismacolor Premier Pro marker for shading of red. Right there is when I tried to use the Star Joy and nothing really happened. So... I'm like, eh, this isn't working. <laughs> so I'm grabbing the Prismacolor Pro Marker. I actually really like the Prismacolor Pro Markers. Um, I have, I have a set of the standard ones, which is a chisel and a fine, but they also make a brush and a fine, and I really like the brush and the fine ones. Someday I'd like to own the whole set of the brush in the fine Prismacolor Pro Markers. So, yeah. I'm sorry, my son just ran into my room. Okay, I'm on the phone. Mommy, I'm looking back. Wow. I got pushed. 
He's overly excited. <laughs> so um, I'm just adding in some darker shades here with this pink Everblend marker. And that pink one, if you guys want to know, is RP15 Delilah Pink. And I use it to do some shading on my little carnations here. Because if we can get away with shading with just markers instead of doing pencil on every single little thing, it works. Saves you time and it looks good and it works. So it's fun. Here is our green that we also used in our garland from our car uh from our polychromos pencil. We're just shading in some of this green re for the flowers. I've pulled the brown that we used on the tree a little bit um, to shade the wrapping here. Now I will go in with a couple other colors a little bit later, but that's just a general, general shading. We also use that color on the mushrooms. And I um, used one of our balloon colors to shade in the inner ear just a little bit. Now you remember we used a water-based marker to color our ear in the first place, the inner ear. You can go ahead and shade on top of water-based marker with alcohol marker. Basically you can layer marker upon marker even if it is a water-based marker. It is perfectly fine. I have found it is easier to shade alcohol marker over water-based marker, but you can do the other. You can make a base of alcohol marker and shade with water-based markers if you want. You can do either or, so if you mix your markers, that's perfectly fine. Um, let's see, what am I getting here? Oh, I'm getting my favorite white gel pen which is the uniball signo i stock up on these i buy the 10 pack and when i'm like getting down to my last one i buy another 10 pack they're my favorite white gel pen just adding a little highlight to the um the beads the poly beads and the little heart on his shirt now i'm uh going in i've pulled my yellow cadmium yellow from my polychromo set that's number 107 and i'm adding in some yellow shading to the beads and i'm going to go in and do it in his shirt yes he has lines in his shirt and i could color every individual line a different color but since there is quite a few things going on in this page i have decided to ignore that completely and treat it as it is a texture, so to speak, and just do shading in the shirt as a whole. Now I am using another color, which is like an orangey color. It's cadmium orange to do some additional shading just to make the shirt have a little more dimension. You can definitely tell the difference. Now I take that same orange and put it into the wrapping and I will also take the yellow as well to give kind of a warmer appearance to the wrapping on our flowers because we have kind of a warm color scheme going on in our picture. This um, dark color that I'm using is dark indigo. I'm using it to help shade our little pants for this little guy. And then I'm also going to use um, uh, Thao, Thao Blue because I, we need to break that up a little bit. Yep. Mommy, look. There's not enough space on that. He's trying to show me some videos he's done on TikTok. Um, I keep his uh, profile as a private profile because he likes to create some interesting videos of him playing video games and just put stickers all over it oh my hungry 
So now that we're, I think we're done with this pants. I'm trying to remember what we did next. I think we went ahead with the grays, we start shading him. Um, when I was doing the marker, as you can see, I don't know if you can tell, but I did stop coloring in the middle of his face right next to his cheek there. So it did leave a little bit of a line. It is okay. I will, I will work with it to create a jawline there. Um, so it will look good in the end. Uh, I have two different grays that I've pulled. The first gray is the darker one, which is warm gray. And it's 275. And then the second gray I pull is a warm gray as well. So one is warm gray, two, 273, and the other one's 275. So it's just a couple shades darker than the other. But both in the same gray color family. My kids are obviously still home and busy, but at least we don't have a million friends over. Earlier today, we had a lot of friends over, so that is why I had to do this voiceover instead of just talking to you while coloring. And I also put it on two times speed, so we weren't here all day, because I think without two times speed, this video was up to 46, almost 50 minutes. And then by cutting the time in half, um, we eliminated a lot of that extra time, which is good because you kind of get a general sense of what I'm doing. See how I have shaded here and it created kind of like he has a little bit of a jawline there. And I'm just shading it in, kind of breaking it up just a little with the the cooler one so it's not so noticeable but it's still there and it makes sense for him to have a line there because of the way his mouth is open and then I am using a little bit of pink um, which is rose carmine 124 I'm just going a little bit above his cheeks and his smile to give him some rosy cheeks because he's blushing he's going up to see his girl He's got to have some rosy cheeks now, doesn't he? And of course we have to use a brighter pink because we're going over a gray color. If you used a really pastel pink, it wouldn't show. And I think I am just doing some shading on the flags. A little bit of pink, a little bit of purple. I'm trying to make these have a little dimension because we already did the alcohol marker base just adding a little more bringing the picture to life basically I did add some to these little carnation flowers as well just so that uh, it broke up that out al solid alcohol marker line giving it a more softer blend in and I decided I would color this little part of the building sticking out the purple color because it it looked like that would be a good good color to go there with the, all the little purple flowers and the little flags and the purple balloons it just works and um, my mind when I was looking at colors on the page it basically made me think that purple needed to be over there somewhere so that is what I went with Sometimes I um, pick colors off the fly and I look at the picture to create balance for color. And that is what basically chooses what color goes where after I've already established colors on my picture. And you can kind of get a feeling when you're looking at a picture of what is lacking in, on certain sides or quadrants. You can divide your page in quadrants in your mind. So quadrants means in four parts. And you can tell where you've had this color and that color. And then you can create balance into a, a piece. But that's just me spouting out color theory. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, I just finished shading that with uh, polychromous purple. So 
that purple is violet 138 so that's a pretty standard polychromos pencil a lot of the colors that I've used I think come in a come in the 24 pack I don't think you have to have the full pack for this but if you don't have polychromos pencils um, you can use any pencils you want like I, um, I've mentioned before uh, I love the gold fiber pencils in nice little town books I think they lay down great they're a student grade pencil um, by Faber Castell and you can get a set I think of 36 and I think that's the biggest set um, for not that much money on Amazon tons cheaper than polychromos and they keep a nice point as well you can also get a standard like small tin at your grocery store for $13 so the gold fabers are very affordable now if you just have some standard Crayolas you can use your Crayolas as well you don't need a fancy pencil to have a fun time with color and you don't need alcohol markers to do this you could do this with permanent markers like your Sharpies and it can turn out really great too um, my lantern and the bottom of this little building part I'm just using that same yellow we used on that shirt and in our balloons and the same yellow pencils to shade that in the brown where I where I did the little detail the little overhang is the same brown the fiber castell polygrip brown that we used on all the other strings and there it is right there and it's a water-based marker so it's not going to bleed out so it's very controlled and here we go with another ohuhu marker we've already used just bringing in that color over there it's the same brown that we used on the mushrooms as you can see no! now I should have slid my page up a little more but I had my camera zoomed up a little bit so you could see the mouse better when I was coloring it so I do apologize you don't get to see the bottom of the page but I think no! you get the general idea of what's going on here as you can see we're we're getting closer and closer to finishing this and it will be done and it will look fabulous and then we'll have a completed page I I don't think I've ever really done a massive color along thing on my channel I mean I think I've done ones in like um, the miniatures books but those ones don't take nearly the amount of time as say like this so I really do appreciate you guys sticking with me as I color all of these little fiddly bits and everything um, I do have to ask do you guys want me to finish this on film and just continue what I'm doing or would you prefer for me just to finish it off or you don't care either way you just want to see me have a finished page um, I do think I could probably get this done in one more video um, I do want to create a border around it um, because I think it needs one um, and I am just about wrapping up here just finishing up this little bottom house doing the inner part blue and I'm going to shade it with our dark blue polychromos pencil if you guys have any questions let me know please let me know if you want me to continue this until the end and you guys have a fabulous day thank you so much for watching guys bye